1967 Hemi GTX convertible is finished. The restoration is done. There's a little bit of detailing left on it, and the owner is flying in from Las Vegas to check it out and drive it for the first time since it showed up at Graveyard Cars. This time on Graveyard Cars, the ghouls test drive prolific Mopar collector Brett Torino's 1967 Hemi GTX convertible. George and Royal go over the Superbird tribute car with Mark's expert guidance. But when Mark gets word of Torino's unexpected visit, the team must band together to put the finishing touches on the GTX before his arrival. Well, that's my job is to deliver the great news. And amidst the hustle, Will decides to pull a prank on Mark that could make him look bad in front of his best customer. What's the deal here? You're not bait and switching me, are you? Hey, Dave. Oh, my God. Wow. All this coming up on Graveyard Cars. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman. And together, we bring dead muscle cars back to life. To exactly the way they were on the day they were born. Hey, how's it going, Alyssa? It's going good. I always work in here by myself. Uh, the body guys are always busy. Mark's always busy, Mike. And it's great having Alyssa. She's just kind of floating around, helping everybody out. I just filled up the master so I got to bleed these brakes. Uh, you mind giving me a hand? No problem at all. It looks like we're going to be bleeding brakes right now. So I'm going to jump in the car. He's going to raise the car all the way up on the lift. And then I'm just going to be pumping the brakes. OK. Yeah. All right, go ahead and pump them up. OK, hold it. Pump them up. OK, hold it. It's a pretty easy system. We're doing it old school, you know, the old uh, pump the brake pedal and hold it. And then one person's there uh, cracking open the bleeder valves. Uh, but what you're just doing is taking all the air out of the, out of the brake lines. Uh, so you usually start at your far end, you know, your longest line. And once you get fluid there, then everything just kind of falls into place and work from your, you know, your rear end to your front end. This 1967 Hemi GTX convertible is owned by Las Vegas developer Brett Torino. Over two years ago, Brett commissioned Mark and the Ghouls to disassemble, replace, and fix previous patch panels and bodywork, with key instruction to keep the original Survivor interior while sprucing the ultra-rare car with new chrome, new trim, and new glass. The suspension was detailed to OE perfection. The transmission was rebuilt by Brewers, making this 1967 Hemi GTX nearly brand new. While Dave continues bleeding the brakes, Mark and the ghouls go over the aftermarket Superbird conversion parts. I've already inventoried and made sure everything's here. Everything in this kit came so that you could convert this car into a Superbird. The Superbird that we brought out right now is our Alpine white one. That's a real car setting next to our Tribute Superbird. The Ghouls have been hired to convert a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner into a Superbird tribute car. While an original Superbird is based on the Roadrunner body, significant changes had to be made, such as the use of a coronet hood and fenders, an aerodynamic nose cone, flush mount headlights and backlight, and of course, the famous NASCAR-inspired adjustable rear wing. To make the transformation successful, the team will put their skills to the test by utilizing a donor 1970 Roadrunner body. Additionally, our top vendors will be called on to help, and specialized Superbird parts from Winged Warrior Body Parts will be a necessity. Meanwhile, in the assembly shop, Dave and Alyssa continue work on the 67 Hemi GTX. On this particular model here, uh, we got a four-piston caliper uh, with disc brake setup. Really cool system. Back in the day, four piston, it was kind of ahead of its time, I think, because now, you know, with some of these tricked out uh, systems, they got six and even eight pistons. So it just shows that Mopar was kind of on the right track as far as performance goes. A lot of the later model Mopars, they all switched over and they went to a single piston. This here gives you a little better performance because with multiple pistons pushing in on the pads, gives you a nice even uh, braking pressure on the rotor, gives you a lot better performance. With a single piston, you usually got one piston moving. It's actually sliding the actual caliper itself on the pads and applying just kind of uh, an uneven type of pressure. But this four piston just shows uh, a lot more uh, performance quality in, in the braking. So. Uh, but far as performance, you know, obviously you can see in 
Some of these, uh, you know, exotic cars right now, they got these multiple piston calipers. So it just goes to show that the multiple piston is obviously going to be a better performing brake. Uh, Mopar, it's good to see them uh, on the right track all the way back in 1967 because uh, you got all this horsepower, this 426 Hemi engine, you got to have some stopping power too. So that's it. Yeah, hey, I'll see you later. Wait, don't forget about me. Back in the graveyard, Mark continues to satisfy George's curiosity about the front end of the Superbird. When you walk out into this yard and you have a question, that's the answering machine. It's just like 411, except it's real. You don't got to dig through a book. There it is. There are a lot of other intricate pieces that make up the headlight buckets and the rotator assemblies and the braces. They're all here. But primarily, what you've got to be aware of right now are the provisions and the changes that you got to make to the body before it goes into paint, all right? You're going to want to take the nose cone. Once these, once you are ready to bolt this onto it, you're going to want to pre-fit that nose cone before they ever start doing body work on it before they start doing mud. It needs to be fit. But there's your one, two, three. That's your Superbird one, two, three. And you're welcome. Cool. I'm here to help you be a better body man and a better friend. Are you curious about anything out here right now? So, are you curious about anything? No. Now that Mark has resolved all curiosities with the Tribute Superbird, Dave has moved the Hemi GTX convertible outside to test the motor. Yes, yeah, so we're yep. ready to start this mother humper up. All right. Ready? Let's do this. Nope. So we're good. I'll watch the oil light here. Oh, look at that. Oh. Perfect. Wow. Not bad. That's not good. It does Fire sound right pretty up. good. Hey, These have mechanical yeah. rockers <laughs> yeah, no in them. That's what all that rattling is. Yeah. I know. I got a screwdriver if you need one, Bob. Do you? Yeah, you know. I know, those cars are probably going to need a little tweaking, I'm sure, huh? Yeah, I'm sure. What are you guys doing? He's adjusting the air fuel mixture on them. Allowing more air in? Yeah, okay. so I mean, it doesn't have the air cleaner on it, too. Which well, it doesn't sound bad. It sounds like maybe a, a hair retarded, maybe. Yeah. On the engine portion of it, that thing ran really good. If you recall, he was threatening my life if it didn't run exactly <laughs> the same as it did when it was here and if it didn't sound exactly the same. So I made sure we didn't touch any of that. I got my audio boy out back. Recording it. We're recording that mother blanker in stereo. This is a stereo microphone recording the audio levels. Our earlier one was not a stereo. This breaks down each cylinder for you. I'd like you to listen to this audio. Egg. Exactly. I think that uh, it sounds exactly like it did before. Reminds me of my rapping days. Turn my headphones up, man. 18436572, I can actually hear the cylinders firing. Sounds good. I can't hear the cylinders firing. Yeah. Alyssa, give it a little throttle. Let's, hey, just give it a little bit. Rump, rump. Just, just not, don't hold, yeah, just some little stuff like that. Ah, oh, that sounds nice. That does sound really good. That's horsepower. Yeah. I loved rubbing it up and sitting in the GTX. But could you feel the power? Yeah. I mean, could you feel that rumble right there that it's, oh, yeah. it's I mean, right you can now? Even your, feel it in the steering wheel. That's what happened to every guy in America and in half the women is they get behind that and you get that thing under your foot and you're never the oh, same. Man. And you're going to get in trouble because. Yeah, yeah you're hooked. Yeah, you, know? you just want to yeah. <laughs> yeah. see what it can do. It sounds good. It does sound really good. I see what he's saying now about the exhaust. The exhaust sounds nice. That's I mean, all horsepower right there. It feels a lot different than driving my Charger. Shut her off. Kill it. Nice. Oh, see, there's our yep, diesel. there's a little bit of diesel, a little so bit I might of... have a little bit too heavy on the timing. But that's all right. We can figure that out. Yep. What does this say day for? We drive this car every day, day and night. It'll actually change the position of the mirror at nighttime so the headlights won't blind you. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah what an really awesome cool. car. Stunning. Anyway, phenomenal job. High five. Thanks, Alyssa, sir. you did a good job putting the interior yeah, in and did. helping him. So right now, I'm getting ready to call Brett Torino. Uh, we've been through all of the systems. Everything is right on the car. Everything has been checked from the back bumper to the front bumper, so it has passed our QC, so it's time for that call. Hello. Hey, is this Brett? This is Brett. Just got off the phone with Brett Torino, and <laughs> I want to be Brett for a day. He's everywhere. Don't think for a second he's not in the air. He's in the air. 
Because I say, well, hey, Brett, this is Mark at Graveyard Cars. He says, oh, I thought I might be hearing from you. I heard through the grapevine. You might be calling me. <laughs> <laughs> How does he know? Because he asks people everywhere, I'm telling you. That's why he's Brett Trino, I'm not. Anyway, uh, he didn't cool. know for sure if it was done, so I told him it was done. He's very excited, and I said, I guess then the question is, you know, this is all on you. Um, we'd love to see you tomorrow, but... Um, well, how about the day after tomorrow? Are you serious? Well, I'm dead serious. Who gets to do that? The day after tomorrow. The guy's a get-it-done guy. I totally respect wow. him. So, yeah, well, I know you're not as excited <laughs> about that as I am. It was kind of dropped on us, you know? I mean, it's nice to have that little bit of a cushion into where when you're working on the car, but yeah, I am nervous because, I mean, he's Torino. You know, regardless of how ready we thought we were for him, it still definitely puts the pressure on knowing he's just two days away from being here. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of scary. Because if anything goes wrong at all, I mean, we're gonna be screwed. Yeah. Well, that's my job is to deliver the great news. Oh, that's uh, nice. No, no pressure. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm sure it'll all work out in the end. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, if you need me, I'll be upstairs asleep. Okay, sounds good. All right. <laughs> Plymouth Superbird tribute car is now ready with all of its basic structural metal work done to come off of the frame jig, get moved over to a rotisserie so we can do the Superbird conversion work to it as well as the mud and the finish work on it. That means we have a car ready to go on to it, our 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner. A lemon twist yellow, 383 four speed. It's got the original engine, non-original transmission. Uh, looked pretty nice at a glance, but once you start looking at it a little closer, you realize it needed the restoration. That's what we're getting ready to do. A new standard operating procedure that we're doing is before any car comes into this body shop for a body man to lay his hands on, every component he's going to need has to be accounted for. So that's what George and I are getting ready to do. We have all of our AMD sheet metal laid out. We're gonna go through, inventory it, make sure it's here, and then I can green light them to bring that car in and start working on it. We have a right hand quarter full. Doesn't look bad, nobody's damaged it. Got a rear body cross member. You got your trunk floor extensions, you got your Dutchman panel. Nice rear body panel, look at that. I love that they punch the actual holes for the word Plymouth in there. That's really cool. You got your step wells, you got your bumper reinforcement, you got your upper deck package tray reinforcement, you got your vertical lock support for the trunk, emergency brake bracket guides. Every single part is here that I ordered, every single part I could think of that we would need. While they're cutting the car apart, they'll be finding anything that we don't have, and I'll have everything out here in three to five days from AMD, so. I think you have everything here that you should be green light go anytime you want to, to put that together. Okay. All right, so with all that, the body guys are green light go, pull the other Roadrunner in, and start moving to the next stage. Uh, what we have here is our 67 Plymouth GTX 426 ME four speed car. What we're going to focus on is uh, these uh, exhaust tips, uh, how you know they are so particular to the 1967 Plymouth GTX as opposed to a 1968 Plymouth. In 1967, they were still kind of figuring out how they want to run their exhaust system. And so uh, when the exhaust system kind of came back here, and you can see where the fuel tank is in here, I mean, granted, this is an aftermarket system. Uh, Brett Torino wanted all his original aftermarket exhaust put back on the car. So uh, we did that for him. It's not exactly OE correct like uh, it would normally be, but uh, if you follow this pipe right here, like whenever it comes down, what they kind of did was they kind of kicked it out in an angle like this here, away from the fuel tank, and the exhaust pipe would actually come out in an angle. Well, if you look at this tip, the tip is a, is a wedge cut. It's not straight. It kind of comes out. It's got like a 40 degree cut right here. And so the purpose of that was, is so whenever you look at the back of the car, it still looks like the tip is firing directly out of the back of the car, even though the exhaust pipe, in a sense, was coming out in an angle. So it's kind of like, uh, gives you a false impression that the pipe is coming straight out, but they wedge the tip to kind of make it look like it's firing straight out the back. So, we get to do some decals. Okay, cool. You're good at doing decals, you do them well, all the time. Well, I don't know, did you see how the Phantom Cuda? No, I haven't went? looked at the Phantom Cuda. Okay. But did you see my jack instructions on Bill Goldberg's car? No, I didn't. Those were pathetic. They okay. were bad. They were terrible. Okay, we're going to be a good team then. But yeah, <laughs> sure. I, got one, I got one step up on it. I actually went out and took pictures of our original 67 Semi GTX out in the boneyard. So okay. I got a good idea of where all the decals got to go. So that's, that's the plus side of it. So. Okay, cool.
This is one of our first real nice days we've had in a while. So we're gonna do our last minute check, button up, make sure it's ready for the road, do our parking lot test, and take it out and go do some damage. Can't wait. So I'm excited, yeah. I mean, it's the first time we've actually driven that car. I didn't even drive it when it came in here. So I'm looking forward to it. Not every day you get to drive a, a 67 oh. GTX 426 Hemi four-speed convertible. Amazing. Okay, I'm gonna fire it up. Okay. That sound nice. Oh. Sounds healthy. It does. What are you guys doing? Hey, we're, we're getting ready to go test. for a spin. Without me? Uh, I didn't know Again? you wanted. I didn't know you wanted to go. I'm here even. Come <laughs> on. What's his face for? What's wrong with you? But you're like a kid. It's, it's a road test. It's of not course, a trip to Disneyland. Exciting. We've had this freaking car for like five years. Let's We've had it for driving. two years. Same thing. You're All right. worse than your predecessor. You going? Heck yeah. Cool. Are we gonna put the top down? No, it's 65 degrees outside. Uh, it's the nicest day you're gonna get in Oregon. You don't need Let's the top down. Let's put it down, down. Why do you want the top because down? Because that's what's the point of driving a convertible with the top up. Come on. The point of driving it, oh, you know what? On second thought, no problem. Let me put the top down. More power to her. Yep, Congratulations. Good. Welcome to hell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, baby belt. First thing we're going to do build. is run through yep. the gears. All right, lockout works. The power steering feels good. Motor sounds good. Now, Brewers rebuilt this transmission. Did they? They've been doing all of our gearboxes, and they are the most joyous things in the world to drive. I mean, just like that right there, just drops right in. Yep. The singles no. are nice. Yep. Oh, how nice is that? Oh, got some power, don't I? Brakes feel good, clutch feels good. Steering feels good. Boy, what a difference between driving this and Goldberg's. Oh yeah, that oh, no power steering dang. thing. Oh. Hey, look at this, one finger, boom. Not sure. I'd have to yeah, test won't. drive it to <laughs> get my out there. there <laughs> oh, that's what we call a snorkeler. Snorkeler. A little snorkeler. It's a good gear ratio, man. Yeah, oh, both yeah. good, doesn't it? Wow. You let off and it chirps. <laughs> chirps yeah. out, yeah. Guys, I can't even see. It's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> got a ton of power, just amazing. You know, so nothing like the torque of that thing when oh those dual gosh. quads open up. You can hear it. Yeah. You can hear it coming down the road. That is one snarler of an engine. I can see why they like the exhaust. That does sound really good. It does. Oh, so much. Sounds great. Sounds better so. than factory. How's that hair doing? Good. So, Man, yeah. I am tired of this hair. Let me tell you what. <laughs> well, you know, next, I wish I would have brought a hair tie. Next time El yeah. Capitan says we leave the top up, maybe you should listen to El Capitan. Drove good, ran good, tracked good, steered good, brake good. Brewers just built that transmission, so it's like butter in there. Uh, that car's tight. It feels really, really good. We've got a handful of little things, some brush touching to do, adjust a carburetor on one of the carburetors. Uh, brush touch some of the bolts underneath the hood, and that and that's really there and ready to go. Maybe if we had to put the top down. This car drives really good. It does. It does. It seems to be doing good. Really nice. I like to take the wax off last minute. Um, if I take the wax off now, I'm gonna come in tomorrow, it's gonna have dust from the body shop or dust from in here or camera boy's gonna scratch. Something silly will happen. So I just last minute, 
take the wax off, everything's perfect, wiped down, and looks as best it's gonna look. Our Supervert tribute car is coming along really nicely. We've got all of the metal replaced. Remember, that was a big job. Lots of metal got replaced on that. Uh, we're at the point now where we're ready to do the conversion steps. Uh, Ryan came and got me this morning. He wants to go over a couple of things on the nose section, get my sign off on it, and then once that's done, he'll be able to move to the back half of the car. Okay, well, I'm going to cut it here cut and flange off. it. Yeah. Yep. The old pieces there. And then we'll flange this. Okay. And uh, trim this out. And I wanted to leave this edge here and trim the edge off that so it's more of a sheet metal factory look. Right. It and was just a metal cut conversion. this off and we'll bond it and we'll just have the bonding right on the edge and it will be... So you'll still so have the it'll, it'll appear reveal. to be sheet metal on the side, it'll actually be stronger I get it. on the side. I like it. It'll make this corner stronger. I like it. It'll be stronger and it'll look more OE yes. to an original Superbird hood. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to flange the upper so we'll bond here and we'll bond here so it'll be really strong. You'll flange this down? Yes. Got it. What he's talking about when he's talking about flange in it is the actual cut on the hood is all the way back here on the other side of this three-quarter piece of tape. That's where the factory cut it when they put their, mm -hmm. their extension piece on. Ryan is going to break it right there, meaning the, instead of the metal coming to just a sharp edge, he's going to take right here and he's going to flange it down at a 90. So this right here will turn straight downhill and it'll make a 90 surface, which will butt. Will butt up to this Perfectly here. up, yeah, exactly. But yeah, imagine that this lip right here looked like this lip right here. It's a perfect bond for the two to go together. Mm -hmm. And then he can clean that out later and make it look like the factory scene. Can you cut this and just yes. kind of simulate that original? Yes. So it looks like an original. So when we're done, it'll look like the original sheet metal cap. OK, great. No, I think that's, a, that's an awesome idea. So go ahead and you can start modifying on that. Ryan's definitely the right guy for the job. He knows what my mentality is, and that is to emulate the original factory look. So his idea along the sides there, a picture windowing that uh, nose extension, that hood extension on there, brilliant. I think when he's done, it's going to be undetectable other than just being able to bang on it and listen to the difference between a metal and a fiberglass extension. But yeah, I totally feel like I'm in good hands, and he's doing a great job on that. This is a good metal man. That's a guy that's always thinking ahead and making it look factory. That's good. He's going to have to, we're going to have to raise the car up in the air and take the whirly jig out from where it's bolted onto the frame rails because it, this section right here is literally where he's going to have to fit his nose cone soon. So we're going to take this and we're just going to use it as a platform underneath the car across the frame rails. That'll expose all this front end form as well. A lot of places will just stuff that nose on there. They'll stuff that plug in there and it'll sort of look like a super bird. But to be really right, that takes, that's not going to happen on accident. That's really a pretty color. It is. This whole thing's coming out. Coming out really nice. And see, I'm not insulting you. You notice that? Yeah. That's OK. Mark will take over when he gets out here. Well, if we can get it done before Mark comes out here. Because I think he's just in his office right now doing the whole check thing. Oh, is he? Yeah. He just signs checks now. Just signs checks? Yep. He is no longer needed out here. Oh, nice. You didn't know that? No. Mm. Of course, I haven't gotten a check, so. Ah. Maybe you should try coming in. There is that. Yeah. I found that's the easiest way to get paid, is actually um, work. I think we're good to go for delivery. Piece of cake. Um, you forgot something. I don't, I don't do the engine stuff. The uh, fender tag. Oh, little oh, fender tag. Yeah, I have that over in my toolbox, actually. Oh, do you? Yeah, he gave it to me a couple weeks ago, but it's not done. I'm going to go grab it, get it painted. OK. Are you capable of taking wax off? I think so. Okay. I think I've done one or two before. Okay. So while you're doing this then, I'm going to go over and get that fender tag and spray it real quick. You better. Mark's going to be pissed. Yeah. You can get over it. Well, I have two. You know what I should do? So what we're talking about inside is the modifications that a Superbird went through when it was at the factory. Okay, the hood that we've got inside is a donor hood that I bought separately from Tony's parts back there. It had a nice used hood that would work perfectly, and that's what the factory did. This is exactly what that hood looked like before Ryan did some cutting on it. The modifications happen somewhere through this area right here. That's why you saw that area exposed. You lose the outer area of the hood, the skin, if you will, but the reinforcement area 
these sections down through here, you leave them. So that's why you see the outer skin gone and the inner, inner structure in place. And I'll show you on our Superbird how that works. <clears throat> this is the front leading edge of a Superbird. This is one of the Janik reproductions made out of fiberglass. It's a nice quality part, it's accurate. It emulates the exact same look as the original steel, but it's made out of fiberglass. We've gotta get it grafted onto this hood wherever that is that it goes. The length is gonna be the same, so it probably goes on right about there. But obviously, this is all in the way from that, okay? So when we're done, we're gonna have all the outer pieces out of the way to accept this part, and then this part nicely grafted onto it and coming out to the same length as the original fenders. So down here on our Superbird, I've got the hood up on this. What Ryan was talking to me about was the edge of this, even though if this was made out of steel, it would have had this edge on it, but the fact that it's made out of fiberglass, we're gonna cut this lip off. And then we're gonna graft this section. See at this factory, this is where they made the cut, no doubt about it, and then they put this piece on. This piece is steel, so they were able to weld, as you can see right here, and here's a spot weld, and here's a spot weld, this extension piece onto the original inner structure. Well, you can't weld fiberglass to steel. So we're gonna leave this part of our hood all nice and original, and we're gonna come along and cut right there and lay our piece into it. Match it up to the same height as the hood, and we will have extended an original coronet hood to look like a Superbird hood, inside and out. So if you popped it up and you looked on the side, he's also gonna make these same cuts after he's done, so that really, unless you did the Andy Crandall tap on it, you wouldn't know the difference between the fiberglass and the steel. So that's what he's working on doing right now. He's got all the provisions made right now. He's got all the uh, under uh, inner structure cut out exactly the way the factory did. So now we're getting ready to install the fiberglass extension piece that goes on there. We just have to clamp it in place. Yeah. So yeah. folks, that's exactly what the factory would have done, except this piece would have been made of steel and it would have been spot welded on there. These are Ted Janix parts. These are out of uh, Winged Warriors down in Texas. He hand makes all these things. Beautiful replica parts. You got my green light, you want some help? Okay, no, I just gotta smear the glue and stick it up there. So you don't mind if I just watch then? This is fun for me. I never get to do anything fun. I'm always out here <laughs> walking around and I miss the fun stuff. He's such a craftsman that stuff like this doesn't make him crazy. I get a little bit antsy. Um, and most of the guys here get a lot more antsy when you're trying to do intricate little cuts and slices and emulate factory little markings, but he'll just, he'll just coast through it. Like those little Pac-Man ghosts, you know little Pac-Man ghosts are just always going around, they're just floating everywhere. And my man Ryan, Pac-Man ghosts. Yeah, he's, he's almost done now, so he's just filling in, backfilling all of his seams and corners with the panel bond adhesive, so make sure we don't have any gaps in there for water to drip into, and also make sure we have good adhesion with our extension piece. He's gonna take panel bond, because you can sand it just like filler, all right? This seam right here, to make sure it's a consistent, perfect-looking factory seam, he's gonna go ahead and fill it all the way up, and then when it kicks off and it's ready to sand, he'll go in there and he'll carve that line back out again and make it look like it's two separate pieces, which it is, but it would look like an inconsistent two different pieces if he just left it alone right now. But once he's done pumping that full, he'll be able to walk away uh, 24 hours from now. That'll be cured completely out and he can take the screws out of it and take the rest of the pieces off it, all the traction devices and start working on getting it sanded out. So once he has all this done, on the extension, we'll be able to put the nose cone on there and start pre-fitting all of it, getting it ready. Once we have a good fit for it, we can start doing the filler work on the fenders and on the nose cone itself. Come here. Yeah? Come here. I got a great idea. You, okay. you, you're, oh, you are so gonna be in on this. This is the fender tag that is correct for this car. Oh, okay. This fender tag is not. This is for a Superbird. So I'm thinking, I paint them both blue. Yeah. You, because you're number okay. one, Install this on this car. Okay. And we the won't Super tell Bird one. The Superbird one okay. on this car, and we don't say <laughs> tomorrow. Okay. At all. Um, I think it's going to get a rise out of him. I like the idea of talking to Brett and letting him in on it. I'm really interested to see how Mark's going to play it off. If he's going to play it off like he doesn't notice it, or if he's just going to light into us right there. All right. So I'm going to go back. I'll get these painted. We'll get them. In you'll get it installed.
Mark's never even gonna notice. He, I don't think does. so I don't. either. Yeah, as good as his eyes are now anyway, you know. Oh, yeah. this is gonna be great. This is gonna be good. Oh, he's gonna be upset. <laughs> Our 1967 Hemi-powered four-speed 354 Dana blue-on-blue -blue GTX convertible is completely done. I mean, restored, detailed, sitting out back waiting for its owner to show up. That's where we're at right now. Everybody's excited about Brett showing up. Yeah, I met Trino on his last visit uh, with Elsa, and they're awesome. I can't wait for them to come to the shop and check out their car and just visit with them. Honestly, they're such cool people. By and large, I think it's a beautiful job. But uh, at the end of the day, only Brett's going to be able to tell us what he thinks of it. And he's the owner, he's the one that's the customer, he's the one that's right. And here we go into the uh, Taj Mark Hall, I call it. Wow. <laughs> I'm Brett Torino. Uh, several years ago, I brought a car up to Mark. I can't wait to see it. I miss it. It's a beautiful uh, convertible Hemi 4-speed GTX, one of my favorite cars of all time. <laughs> Yeah. Mark's Hi. World. Hi. Mark's World. Yeah, there's my little SF. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's really nice. Really down to earth. Easy to talk to. You got my cars. We do. Yeah, we have really one that's done. done. Yeah, one that's done. <laughs> Worth the wait. <laughs> yeah. Excited to be here. I think that this moment right here is one for Brett that he'll remember as well because it is his favorite car. It is done right. He'll be able to enjoy it, maintenance free, have fun have a ball in it, and truly get back to, I think, the appreciation he had for cars when he first started his collection. Ilsa and I were watching television one night, and I just saw this uh, crazy guy on TV, this amazing personality who was a perfectionist, had incredible knowledge, and I turned to Ilsa and said, I want to meet this guy. I want him to do several of my cars. So we have a 1967 Hemi GTX four-speed convertible that is restored quite well. Amazing. And I will remind you, just as I already know you know, um, certain little things. Like how it sounds. The exhaust is exactly the <laughs> way it is. I'll be hearing that it's... car before I see it, right? I, I, know the, I know the whole routine. <laughs> right, Mark? Okay. Yes, sir. I'm, everything's going to work out. I understand there was a recording made, some decibel printout or something that had I don't something had to do printout. with, you know. <laughs> do you want me to send it to NASA? I'm telling you, I did my best, all right? It sounds the way it did before. So we're going to bring you guys out back have you wait right. and I'm gonna bring the car around the corner and let Better. you see it for the first time in three years. It's worth the wait. Well, thank you very much. Now that Brett and Elsa have met the ghouls, Mark escorts them to the graveyard to reveal Brett's ultra rare one of seven 1967 Hemi GTX convertible. So excited. Been a while since you've seen it, huh? Too long. Wait. Uh, I'm gonna line you guys up here. Bing, 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 My bing, reaction bing. is, okay, where's right the here. car? I, well, then, I, I didn't want to spoil you when I came around the corner. All right. It's my only it's one. It's your only one. That's right. <laughs> I thought he was an ugly one. <laughs> you sure you're ready? I mean, we can go do I'm something ready. Else. No, okay. come on, bring it out. I'm here to help you. You believe that, don't you? Come on. It's gone. No, there it is. You brought him a little excited. I mean, he was glad to see everybody and meet and greet, but I think he really wanted to see the car. Yeah, he did. He couldn't wait to hear it. He goes, I better hear that car before I see it. Wow. I hear it. Does it sound the same? I hear it. It sounds better. <laughs> I guess so. I've heard it for so long. <laughs> That's right. That's a good wow. Awesome. This is so exciting. How does it sound? Oh my God. Does it sound okay? <laughs> yeah, I revved it up a little bit. I was kind of toying with him. I know he was excited to see it. It's so oh. good. You know, it's been so darn long. I mean, we had an agreement when I left here, and that agreement was that exhaust better sound the same as it sounded when we drove in with it. Oh my God! Look at this thing. <laughs> Yay! All right. I knew that when I went around the corner and saw the smile, pretty much I was out of the woods. It didn't sound any different. Happy to announce. Wow. Wow. It is awfully pretty. <laughs> oh, my God. Here, let me give you a hug. Wow. All right, big man. Oh, my God. This thing, <laughs> this thing literally could bring tears to my Aww. eyes. Mark? I mean, for a guy that's owned every car in oh. the world, there's not a better compliment for me, so. Oh, my God. It's beautiful, man. It's <laughs> Hats off, guys. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Amazing.
thing about uh, the GTX 66, 67 year model is that the cars were just big, elegant, simple cars. They put Hemi engines in them, but they didn't modify the bodies at all of these cars. So whether you had a GTX Hemi or you had a GTX 318, it was the same car. But the car was just a lot of muscle and it was classic. And it's kind of the end of an era as far as the GTX model went and what it became. So I just thought it was a great time to own one of these precious cars. And I got one of very few convertibles that were ever manufactured. I've owned it for probably well over a decade now. And uh, just, you know, feel very privileged. I love the paint when it's like, I mean, you can see the clouds and count the roads right there in the actual hood itself. You know, this car always was going to be a keeper. Yeah. And I, God almighty, Mark, I am just blown away. <laughs> just, you, you've got all your correct decals on. Back in the day, they had to tell us how to jump start one. Now, I know you've got red cap batteries down there, and if you want to put one in it, but I never had much luck with them lasting. You guys playing games? Huh? Yes. What's that? It's a little darker. But that's it's just because darker. he painted it. Yeah, he just painted it. This? What? What is it? Here. You're not bait and switching me, are you? Hey, Dave. When he comes out and you're looking at the car and you pop the hood, make sure you notice that it's the wrong fender tag for yeah, it. Yeah, I'll look very curious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't mean to embarrass you in front of 20 million people or anything, but is it my imagination or is, is that a, hang on. Is that a limelight Superbird four speed? <laughs> so when I look over the fender and I see a Superbird fender tag, I, I mean, you, you do, your, your sphincter puckers up just for a second. You have that little that little moment where you're not sure if you're coming or going. <laughs> what are you looking at me for? That's the it's fender a, tag I'm just that, that you gave Will the paint. <laughs> for this car? No, it's no. not. That's the fender tag I gave you was when you first started here. That's the one. No, I gave it to you months ago. That's off of the lime green Superbird. I gave you that a few weeks ago because I wanted to send it. Well, that's the only one I had. No, you have that one. Now, this one here and is the one I would be I laughing if I was. They took the fender tag for that, painted it the correct blue, put it on the car, and then Brett pretends, he already knows it, but he pretends like, wait, that's not my fender tag. Of course it's your fender tag. Actually, that's not your fender tag. <laughs> I think it's all fun and games. Oh, wow, that. <laughs> we, we did that on purpose. We did it on purpose. Somebody better have the f It's okay. It's so <laughs> chicken. <laughs> Son of a <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. You know, I have a healthy sense of humor, as everybody knows, and I like a good joke and I like to have fun. I just didn't see Brett playing along. But that was cool. That was funny. Yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. It's good to have a laugh. It was good, it was fun. You know, you're dealing with a guy that's slightly overweight, a couple pounds, maybe 80 ounces overweight. Uh, blood pressure is a little elevated at times. And you know, I'm no spring chicken, so. Now we thought to... about that, and Mike actually can do CPR. <laughs> So we were, Mike, Mike, was, Mike was prepared <laughs> for mouth to mouth. So well, every friend. time you refer to a fender tag, it always starts with, with all things holy. I think once everybody's kind of nerves calmed down a little bit and we had the opportunity to digest the car, relax a little bit, know that it was real and everything was happening and everything was going to work out, uh, that's when he really started to gain the appreciation for the car. I mean, this sounds so great. Oh, it sounds so it's just tough. I hate to say that, but it, you know, it's and it's tough. always run. It's always I mean, been a thing, good driver. It's just, you turn the key, the thing starts, it yep. goes. It's always been that way. That's awesome. I've got something this to This sounds do. just. You love it? Oh, poetry. So, yeah. Getting this is art. <laughs> Now that the GTX is on the short list to be the next Poet Laureate, let's take a look at what the ghouls got done this week. Dave and Alyssa completed the brakes and decals for Torino's Hemi GTX. Yeah, this looks great. So those are those ones, so that looks nice. Mark and Dave tested the engine in the graveyard, and at Alyssa's insistence, Roe tested the car with the top down. I can't see or hear anything, so. 
the ghouls got a lesson in aftermarket Superbird parts. But there's your one, two, three. That's your Superbird one, two, three. And you're welcome. Cool. And speaking of birds, George got everything together to commence work on a 1970 Roadrunner. It uh, looked pretty nice at a glance, but once you start looking at it a little closer, you realize it needed the restoration. Brett Torino flew in for the reveal of his one of seven ever built 1967 Hemi GTX convertible. Will, Dave, and Royal recruited Torino to help to pull one over on Mark, testing his observation skills and his blood pressure medication. But now that Mark has survived his employee's prank, it's time to see if he can make it through the test drive. So with the systems check, the sound check, everything as systems go, it is time for the road test with Mr. BT, Batrino. Yeah, I can't wait. This car will get driven. And I wanted it to be able to be driven, you know. It, it wasn't restored to uh, park it in a building and stare at it. I want this car to be driven, and it will be driven. It was a great day. You know, I know my GTX has been here several years, but for me, getting the car back right and knowing what I get back, you know, it's worth the wait. You know, I, I wouldn't want a car back that wasn't perfect. If I got it back in two years and you're driving down the street and you're sending a guy a punch list, and at least I know when Mark and the gang are working on my cars, when the car is ready to leave, that car is going to be as perfect as it could be. So for me, the wait just makes the reunion that much more special. The test drive went great. The car sounded great. Everything went absolutely perfect on it. No problems, no errors. When he did get back, he uh, wanted to take a minute and take a look at this Coronet before he got out of here, which is the 70 Coronet 426 Hemi four-speed convertible. Why not, right? One of two ever made. If I'm not mistaken, maybe two made that year. One was wrecked a long time ago. And very, very special car. Uh, we've had the body dipped on it, and we've had it epoxy, but that's about as far as we've gotten on it. That's the one thing he wanted to see, he said before he left, before he, he, left. he wanted to see the Coronet. That, that car obviously holds a, a spot in his heart. It's a little more nerve-wracking now because of how legitimately attention to detail this guy is. You take for granted, you know, he's picky until he gets here. So knowing, you know, how, what a great eye he has for everything in a car of that magnitude, I think the whole thing's gonna be kind of stressful doing that car. And when you set the bar so high the first time around too, well, yeah. kind of makes it stressful. Yeah, it's a very, very special car. And I see a whole parking lot back there of incredibly special cars. All in all, once that was done, uh, he had to fly out of here. Uh, we said our goodbyes, shook hands, and uh, it was just a great visit. Uh, always welcome back here, he's part of the family. Thank you. I mean, just thank Mark, thank everyone, Royal, the whole gang that you know I've watched over the years. Thrilled to be able to know him. All great people, and uh, heck of a lot of fun coming out here today. Enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs>